Hi there, we're looking at congruence triangles, which if you remember means that the one triangle fits exactly onto the other triangle, and we say they are congruent using the symbol. Congruency of triangles is part of Euclidean geometry, but we also need to remember our other information that will help us. In this video, although we know that there are four cases of congruency which we've talked about in other videos, we are specifically going to look at the case of 90 degree hypotenuse side or right angle hypotenuse side. So let's get going. Let's have a look at a question where we decide whether the triangles are congruent or not. So we are given a picture, quite a complicated one, with DF and AC. DF and AC are straight lines, that's useful to know, and AD is equal to CF and ABFE, ABFE is a square. So that's a lot of information because we know stuff about squares that we've got to remember now. There's a lot of characteristics, qualities or properties of squares that we should remember. So let's see what we're given. Let's start off with the fact that AD and CF or FC are equal. Let's mark that off. There we go. AD and FC are equal. So we know that ABFE is a square. That means that AE and FB will be equal because opposite sides in a square are equal. That's useful because not only is it information about the square, but it's also information about the triangle. All right. Um, the next thing to look at is to try and figure out what more information we have. So we have the square, but the only part that seems to be connecting the square to the triangle and the other triangle are the two sides that we've shown are equal. Maybe there's more. This angle is right next door to that angle. I don't know about these two because we don't know how big that one is, but because this is a straight line and we know in a square that the angles are 90 degrees, it will mean that the other angles, let's just mark that off, next to them will also be 90 degrees because of the straight line. So if E2 is 90, and we've got a straight line, E1 has to be 90 to make up the 180 of the straight line. And similarly over there. So we can say that E1 and B2 are also each 90 because of angles on a straight line. So let's mark that off. Now this last part was quite complicated to get to, so we can't just say E1 and B2 is equal to 90. We need to explain why. Okay, it's much like in a court case when you want to prove that somebody is innocent. You need to go through the explanation of what they did not do so that you can explain that they are innocent. So are the two triangles congruent? Let's go through the explanation with statements and reasons. We always start with an introduction. Easy facts first. AD and FC are equal because they were given. AE and FB are equal because they are opposite sides of a square and opposite sides of a square are equal. Now the third one is a bit more complicated as we said, so let's go through the logic that we've previously used. We said that E2 and B1 are equal to 90 degrees because the angles of a square are each 90 degrees, which makes E1 90 and B2 90 because of angles on a straight line, which means that E1 and B2 are equal because they are both equal to 90 degrees. There's different ways that you can write this. Sometimes people don't like to have two facts in a line. They like to keep them separately. Find out what your teacher prefers. So because we've got three sets of equals, we can say the triangles could be congruent. Let's just check those equal facts though. AD and FC is a side. AE and BF is a side. And E1 and E2 are an angle. So I'm thinking, side angle side, is it the included angle? No, it's not. Well, the other case is if it's a right angle, hypotenuse side. A right angle, hypotenuse side. Yes, it is. So that is our case of congruency. Hopefully you've understood the difference between side angle side and right angle hypotenuse side. And you're able to take information a little bit further to prove your Sides and angles are equal. 